Hey, what's up, church? It is good to connect with you again um, through here. I understand that there have been some videos, uh, and I believe ours from yesterday was one of those that, for some reason, is not showing up on people's uh, phones. But what I understand is that they're still showing up on computers. And so I don't know uh, which one about tablets or not and how that is working. So if you were looking for yesterday's and, and you didn't see it on your phone, then try your uh, computer and see if it's there. And I will try to reshare it uh, just so, so you have it. Um, hopefully it'll come up. I'm not sure what's going on. I think, you know, I, I think Facebook has just been overloaded with all of these uh, videos, live videos that are being done now, especially. I think it may just be overloading the system. So uh, hopefully this will come through and you'll be able to, to see it and to uh, spend some time with your family doing this. I hope you've been enjoying the, the time uh, with your family. And so we're going to go ahead and get right into it. We're working on through this, restoring the family altar. And uh, hopefully uh, you've been enjoying it. We're on Ephesians chapter 1. Uh, again and verses 13 to 14 and it says in him again being Jesus you also trusted after you heard the word of truth the gospel of your salvation in whom also having believed you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory and again, it's, uh, we start with the fact that uh, our salvation comes through our, our trusting in Jesus, and it comes after hearing about him. In fact, Paul says in Romans that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so he's kind of echoing that same thing right here to the church uh, at Ephesus. And, uh, and then it says that we were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Now, I want to just think about that in, in today's terms. And so you're, you're getting ready to send a package. You get everything put in there, all these these things. You're sending maybe a Christmas present to a, a loved one, and you get it's all in there, and you, you you tape it up nice and 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 good, and you got the you know you've already got the packing peanuts or whatever in there to, to help keep it from uh, from sliding around, and, and and then you go ahead and you put an address on there, the return address, and and those are all obviously important. You have to do that, but but it doesn't become a delivery until you get that um that stamp on it and i know at least with the uh, with the united states postal service that that once that stamp is on there and put into their hands um then that package is protected by the u.s government and so when paul is writing this and it's a federal uh, crime to to steal a, a letter even junk mail out of someone's mailbox that's a it's a federal offense and so um so think about those days you've probably seen some of those old movies or whatever where you know they they take a candle with the wax and you know and they dip it on a, a scroll or whatever and they, they have a ring a signet ring which you know maybe like a family crest or whatever on there and they, they press it on there and what that does is it's a it's a sign that this has been um sealed and it's not to be opened by anyone ex except for the recipient and and um and and it's a way of of trying to in essence protect the the contents that are there and to know that they're protected by a um a a great power or authority uh, over that letter and so I want to think about that when it comes to us, that we've been sealed by the Holy Spirit. And that's kind of the same thing that's happening here. God has put his stamp of approval on us. And and sometimes we struggle with that, right? We, you know, that maybe maybe God, you know, can love, you know, that person or that person because they just seem like they're really good people. But man, I've just done some stuff in my life. How could God really do this with me? But the, the truth is that that's how much he loves you. And let's go back to the the first day remember he loved you and he chose you before the creation of the world uh, to be holy and blameless he he wants to do some incredible stuff through you and so so paul is in in some ways just continuing that theme right here uh, for us and it says here in the book the struggles of life may make you feel insecure and vulnerable and right now right i mean just you know this is a, an easy time to feel insecure and vulnerable but it's important to understand that you have been securely fastened in your salvation by the Holy Spirit. Your inheritance is guaranteed by God himself. 
You are his purchased and prized possession. And I just want you to know that today. You are his purchased and prized possession. So here are our questions today to, to talk about with your family. And again, I'll put them in, uh, in, in when I, as I post this, I'll put the questions up in there as well. And uh, question number one is, in what areas of your life can you increase your trust in the God who paid the price for your salvation? Number two, what disappointments in your life have caused you to doubt the security, excuse me, of your inheritance in God? So those are great questions. Again, I'll also uh, post the, the children's questions when I do this. And, uh, and, and uh, I hope these are, are helpful and they're things that you'll be able to just, again, spend some time with your family in, in special ways. So uh, love you, church. Thank you so much for taking time to uh, invest in, in, in each other again. And uh, be sure to keep in contact. Stay well. Wash your hands. And, uh, and see you, Lord willing, tomorrow with another video. May the grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with each and every one of you. And may you be covered in the dust of your rabbi. Jesus, love you, need you, see ya.